Once again, I was Global Negros Party, your girlfriend's trending topic. I bring you uh, an amazing, an amazing guest today, right? Um, and she's um, she's been featured on some, you know, some light magazines. And I'm just gonna, you know, mention some names. You're like Forbes, Live Strong, Medium, Sex Out Loud, Women's Health, Huffington Post, and more. You know, it's just light work. But on top of that, she's a sexologist at the American College of Sexologists. Um, and top 100 sex blogging superheroes. Because, you know, not all heroes wear capes. Dr. Lane St. John's, right? Lene. Lene, Lene, I'm sorry. The, uh, Dr. Lene St. John's, a.k.a. Mama Sutra. Welcome. That's me. Thank you so much for having me today. <laughs> all right, so before we, before we go into everything, right, um, my my analogy right of where mama sutra comes from right i was like i put like kama sutra but then like yeah. mama sutra because you're a mom and you're teaching about like being like parenting i guess and sex you go time, right did <laughs> I get it? you I, did I, you did that was you know <laughs> clever that's very clever well and it, it when it started um it was back in like 2009 and my kids and I were big into um, roller derby. And so we were trying to figure out, we were figuring out names for ourselves, but at the same time I was trying to come up with a name for my business and yeah, the mama and the teaching about sex and all of that. And Mama Sutra just like landed. <laughs> Boom, that, sound, that sounds, I mean, that's, that's clever. I think, you know, when it comes to like branding, right? I think um, when people can uh, almost like figure out how you came up with it it also just gives much more meaning to it because we comprehend like what's your purpose and whatnot um but like as we said right parenting talking about sex right um before before we get to the you know to your book which we're going to speak about um uh the parental prem uh, premiere for talk for the talk the so legendary talk and i actually have a lot of questions about the talk because i don't think i technically got it I think I got like a little like recap. <laughs> you won't be alone in that. <laughs> um, um, you know, but we'll also be talking about the five tips um, to approach um, the sex and relationship with the kids. Um, but right now, you know, I want to talk about mistakes that parents make, right? Um, mm. And I think one of my biggest debates when I have these conversations with people is like, you know, are they starting too late? You know, like, and Start what? too late? Too late, right? Like, and you know, and what's what's too late, right? Because I don't think you, my personally, right? I don't think there's a specific age, but you know, how can a, a parent identify, like, you know, what maybe um this is the time, or maybe I'm too late already, like, you know, how would how would a parent deal with that? Yeah, so there's a there's a few ways to look at this. Um, the conversations around sexuality, my philosophy in general, is that we need to bring more things into the conversation so it doesn't make it so scary for us. Um, I think we've gotten to this whole hookup culture because we only think that we need to talk about sex. So kids think that that's the end goal, but really the stuff that we should be talking about and helping them with to develop into a healthy sexuality is love, dating, relationships, like all the stuff that technically could come before the sex part, right? <laughs> and so, <laughs> I mean, it will be that way for some people, right? Um, but there's, there's a little bit of knowledge that parents need to sort of tune into. And that is these conversations are throughout their life. They start when they're very young, but it's not about, you know, penis and vagina stuff at the time when they're infants, right? At that age, it's all related parents can be talking about using the proper names for the body, the different parts of the body. And it's like a muscle memory that they, the parent or the adult or the caregiver can get used to by saying the words, right? Saying, this is your vulva as they're changing a diaper, right? Or, um, you know, changing a diaper, taking a bath and a little, little, person with a penis wants to hold on to the penis, <laughs> you just, yeah, name the penis, right? So there are parts of the body that you can say, and we don't have to have the embarrassment or guilt um, or whatever feelings that we have about these parts of the body, because, you know, no different than the ear or the, you know, the elbow, they're just the names. And so being able to give them the proper names for these parts of their body gives them a sense of ownership right? So they can start to be taking care of their parts just like they would all the rest of them, right? 
so it's it's like a it's like a shift in our thinking because if we think oh gosh i only have to talk about you know this sex thing that's not that's not the whole picture right there's like pieces of it we need to talk about love dating what do you, why would you date what would what would you look for in someone that you would date um, what does dating mean? <laughs> you know, like bringing up all these conversations that eventually will make that conversation you have about sex or the acts more comfortable. So I guess uh, what I'm getting at is that you think that parents should definitely work on having um, a progressive process leading yeah. themselves to have yeah. the quote unquote talk. Yeah. Right. And I'll give you another example. Actually, there's a couple of different ways I, I think about this as well. And I wrote about it in the book. So um, when we teach kids about math, we don't start off with multiplication and division and calculus, right? We start with really simple things. And that's the same thing with sex. You don't start talking about BDSM and Tantra. That's not, <laughs> that's not what you begin with. Right. That's the first conversation you get like, well, you know, this is how it goes down. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So being able to be comfortable with the really basic beginner items. Right. And uh, that's that's one way to look at it. Now, you know, let's say like because, you know, I think one of my things as, as a coach, right. Um, I've gotten certain questions that I feel like I'm not the appropriate person to answer. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But then I'm also like in the back of my mind is, you know, they probably ask me because they're not comfortable asking their parents. Right. Yeah. So, Bingo. You know, like, you know, you're how a safe do you, person, it, but you know, how do you address n not answering the question? You know, cause I think that's a mistake that a lot of parents make, right. Yeah. When the question is asked, it's not answered. Right. So yeah. as, as a parent, how do you kind of like mold yourself out of that or kind of take your, yourself out of that? I don't know, I guess the, the la costumbre of doing that, like, you know, every single time. So I guess the question is, is the parent uncertain how to answer it or that they just don't want to talk about it? I, th I think both, right? Because I think as, as much, as much sex that we have, you know, how, how many of us are actually educated in sex, yeah. right? And, yeah, fair. and that, and at the same token, it's kind of like, you know, as a parent, it's like, you know, my parents never had this conversation with me. Should I be having this conversation? Right. And you know, like it, it kind of goes into that battle. And then, I mean, it goes into another like realm of me and thinking about what I think about parenting, you know, I, we're not going to get into that one, but you know, I think, you know, there's a, there's sometimes that debate of like, you know, am I educated enough to answer this question? And yeah. should I answer this question now? So to be fair, I don't even know what the percentage is, but so I hear this, this exact point so often i didn't get it my parents didn't talk to me about it i didn't get a very good education in school i only got you know abstinence only which was the whole thing about spitting in a cup and then passing that around and then telling the last person to to drink it like, like <laughs> some really right. messed up lessons <laughs> in sexuality but i think it's what we don't realize is that it's totally fair to acknowledge you know my parents didn't talk to me about this and the topic makes me a little nervous, to be honest, but you know, I don't know the answer to your question right now, but I will go research it. I will find out the answer and I'll come back to you. Is that okay? You know, and like checking in with them because, you know, sometimes it might be that the kid heard something on the playground or they saw something that they ran across on their iPad when they were, you know, looking for something else. So, you know, they're, you definitely want to circle back if you say you're going to do the thing and then you go research, you need to go back and tell them the answer. Now, um, to just dive in a bit more into the parenting, um, you know, do, and, and I'm bringing this question up because I'm, I'm a strong believer that um, we're not born parents. And even if we have kids, we're not parents yet. Right. Because I feel like we need to have a certain level of education, um, yeah. what parenting's about. Right. Um, yeah. Would you say that probably one of the most difficult parts of, of being a parent is maybe like, you know, juggling these subjects um, with the kids? Because I know, you know, you have two daughters, right? So mm -hmm. you know, how, you know, how, how was, how, how actually, yeah, as, as a sexologist, how was, how was having that conversation with your kids? Yeah. So 
the conversations with my kids have been such that, I mean, they've been pretty constant. Um, I would say that we didn't start off with sex, you know, the talking about the acts. We talked about all the stuff around it. Um, I was just talking to my daughters yesterday. We were laughing about a conversation we had when they were really little. I think they were three and five, or no, five and seven at the time. And we were talking about the word sexy. And I asked my girls, what is sexy? Like, what's the definition of sexy? And that's a, kind of a complex question to ask a five and, five seven, and seven year old. Yeah. 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 But they absolutely have an impression of what is sexy. Like my youngest couldn't describe it or she couldn't articulate it, but she could model it. And she did this like, and if you could picture like a five-year-old still looks like a little cherub, right? <laughs> and she did this like puckering of her lips and she did like a little Jessica <laughs> rabbit, like, <laughs> <laughs> right? And so when we were talking about this, even just yesterday, they're, you know, 16 and 18 now. And this conversation, this reflection of this conversation was like, we were laughing about it, but then we got a little deeper into the conversation and said, well, whose definition of sexy is that? Is that your definition of sexy? Where does that come from? You know, what gave you that impression that that was sexy, right? Because these are, these are advanced concepts. And if we're not taught about it, where do we learn? We learn from seeing everything around us. And so if we have models that are TV shows or characters in a movie or in a book, right? We're going to, we're going to use those as our, as our go-to or as our model. All right. Now, you know, we, we spoke lightly on, on the honest part, right? About um, yeah. uh, sexuality and talking to our kids about this, right? Um, but as someone who has, um, has explored enough in his sexual life, right? You know, how honest can I actually really be with my kids, right? And, you know, when is it, um, I know, what's the adequate age to then me really start, like, I guess, being much more open? Because I feel like, you know, obviously I can't, you know, I can't tell my 12-year-old, hey, you know, I've been part of threesomes and orgies. I, you know, I, I, I just feel like... I might be a little young. <laughs> exactly, right? So, you know, like, you know, what, is there, is there something that kind of... Um, is a, I don't want to say a hint, but almost like a, like a notification, like, Hey, listen, they're at a point where now you can, you know, be much more open about the entire, you know, your sexual mm -hmm. history and, you know, your knowledge on it. Well, your mileage may vary, right? Because sure. you may have a different relationship with your kids than, than some other parents. Some other parents may never reveal that kind of information. Um, I guess my guideline for that, or at least the, the guideline I'm using for myself is following my kids lead. So if they're asking me this kind of information, I'll debate at the point <laughs> whether I really want to be fully honest or give them what they need to know, right? Like they don't, they don't necessarily need to know who was involved in the threesome or <laughs> where they were, right? Or where it was or what they were doing at the time. Cause they're, they're, they might even calculate that themselves. <laughs> yes. Um, but like, I guess just following their lead, if they're asking for questions, asking for the information, um, or, I mean, I would, I would definitely wait for more, more detailed information like that. Like, like the calculus and the, <laughs> you know, linear <laughs> equations and all that. Like, I got you. I, much I later. I was a math teacher, so I got you. Don't worry about it. Oh, um, sweet. <laughs> now, um, now let's talk about, you know, cause you know, I think a lot of us, you know, we didn't grow up with um, sex positive parents, right? Yeah, um, yeah same. So I think, you know, when it came, when it came to the talk, right, um, I think my mom kind of hid behind the, you know, wear a condom so you don't get an STD, right? Mm -hmm. um, well, I'm sorry, not even an STD. It was wear a condom so you don't get a girl pregnant. That was really yeah. how, how the story was sold to me, right? Yeah. Um, you know, we never spoke about, you know, like intercourse. We never spoke about, you know, people being aroused, um, about masturbation. Well, God forbid we spoke about masturbation. Um, so, you know, you know, what would be your tips to like, you know, guide a parent to become sex positive with their kids? Yeah. 
I think the way to become sex positive in general starts with addressing your own issues or concerns around sexuality, the, the fears you may have. I think that goes back to kind of one of your earlier points about the toughest thing about being a parent is having your own sexual shame or guilt or embarrassment and not passing that on to your kids. Like it's going to be so easy to pass it on to your kids. And so being able to like, oh. <laughs> you can walk faster. <laughs> that was actually, you, uh, when, next time you, when you come back to the other side, you should do it again like that. I like that. Uh, um, you know, but you know, how do you like, you know, you, cause I feel like everybody has, you know, the, whatever se sex shames you have or whatever sex boundaries you have. Right. How don't you pass that as a parent, you know, because it's almost like, you know, it's almost like not showing who you are at a, at, as a, you, you see where I'm getting at? Like, mm -hmm. I feel like it's such a difficult kind of, um, uh, like conversation behavior to manage around your kids without acting weird, but still not, you know, yeah. kind of like, get, cause this is my thing, right? So I, I'm not sure. Well, I have kind of have an idea, but you know, I think I've been very open when it came to, when it comes to my sexuality and what I do about it. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm very open on sharing my stories, right? But I also feel that, you know, I went through things, um, I have done things that had I not spoken about it, somebody else would have not known, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. And that, to me, has definitely helped me to cope with who I am. But then at the same token, I'm like, hmm, would I really have this conversation with my kids? Yeah, you know, yeah. but I also think it's important to have. So it's you see, what, like, it's, I feel like it's such a a tough debate, right? But you know, I'm I'm saying all this, right? Because you know, you write this book, um, you know, what would you say are like the two best gems that I'm gonna get from getting this book? Well, the one thing is, the book itself is written with lots of, lots of research um, and anecdotes of situations, how I dealt with it with my kids. Oh. Um, one of the takeaways I think you could take away from the book is having these conversations helps you connect with your kids in a way that you may have never connected with your own parents. Um, you know, one of the fears that parents have is that if they talk to their kids about sexuality at a young age, that they're going to hurry up and go out and do it, right? But the research doesn't support that. The research supports that the decisions they make, they make decisions that are the ones where they will probably use um, protection, so prevent pregnancy or STI when they actually do eventually have sex. Um, they do it with people who are of their own age group. Um, they, yeah, they just make more informed decisions and they, and they do delay the first sexual experiences when they have good information as opposed to, okay, nobody's talking to me about this thing. I'm going to go figure it out. And so it's, you know, I, I had, I got permission from my daughter to share the story. This was a couple of years ago. Now, my oldest, we were, I don't remember what we were talking about, but she said, you know, when I decide to have sex, I want to do so with someone I feel really comfortable with. And I was like, that's really interesting. Why do you say that? And she said, I get the sense that sex is awkward and I want to find somebody that I'm totally comfortable being awkward with. Like what? mic drop. Qu question, when was this? She was like 16, 15 wow. or 16 when she thought that. Wow. And that's the thing found. about that, the thing about that, 40 year old me didn't know that. Right? Like it wasn't a thought process that like, you know, gosh, you know, sex is sex is awkward. Like I really want to find some that was not what I thought. Yeah, and, and you know, I and you know, I, and it goes back, I was gonna ask I have so many questions now. Um so, <laughs> so right, so you know, I think, you know, when I think as also as a parent, right? When you hear that, you just kinda like, yo, I I must have done an amazing job and I didn't know it, you know? Uh, and, and I think, you know, 
like when when I did it, I did it because like everybody else around me was doing it, and I was kind of like, "All right, cool." So since everybody else is doing it, I need to do it too. Yeah, you know, yeah. That was that was really my reaction about it. And to be honest, mm-hmm. like I like I feel I feel so bad for this, but like the only reason I had sex with this girl is because oh, cool, we're, we're down to have sex. All right, cool. So let's do it. Like there was no there was no interest. I didn't really know her. You know what I mean? Yeah, um, yeah. and I yeah. also think it's because it was the lack of expanding the talk, right? Yeah. And like really like. You know, I think the it gives the parent the 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 first kind of steps of like, listen, it's not just the uh, uh, hey, we're gonna sit down, we're gonna have this conversation, and we're never gonna touch it back again, right? Yeah. But like yeah. you said, you know, kind of like a process of building up so our child and our you know our kids can make decisions like this that we're kind of like, damn, I wish yeah. I, I wish I knew that now, like you know, like and I no, I think that's beautiful. Um, but yeah. I'm also gonna ask you, you know. And you were talking about um, the research, um, you know, in, in, especially in, in, in the lion culture, right? There's a lot of restraint of um, not saying, right? Um, yeah, you don't talk about it. You don't talk about it. You're not allowed out. You're not supposed to be hanging out at night. You're not going to sleep over your friend's house, right? Um, yeah. Do you think that the lack of knowledge in sex, the restraint on your social... Uh, I guess it, gatherings and whatnot, right? Do you think at a certain like at a certain level that pushes kids to kind of go be curious somewhere else? Yeah, I do. I mean, we have to look at why why people did things that way or why people do things that way, right? Ultimately, they want to protect us, and they think that that's the best way to do it. And it's probably because that's how their parents did it. And so it doesn't necessarily mean that it's the best way. It just means that it's the only way they know. And, you know, having these conversations, to be honest, the conversations I had with my daughters also very early on was about like being comfortable with their bodies. And there's a certain amount of resilience from potential abuse that a kid gets when they have this this sense of pride of ownership over their bodies, right? They know their parts, they know how it works, they know themselves, they know their boundaries, and they're not likely to let some, you know, creepy uncle or creepy adult cross them. And I think by not giving our kids information, it actually keeps them vulnerable to people like that or, or, you know, anyone out there that is potentially someone who could do them harm. So we think it's being safe, but we know there are plenty of instances where, you know, what was the name of the, the coach for the U.S. women's gymnastics team, I right? Know. What are you talking about? You have that, you have priests and deacons and pat, like people of the church who even abuse, right? That comes out in the news. So there are all these instances where people are, we're 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 not really protecting our kids when we're not talking about this stuff. I mean Jeffrey Epstein as well, right? Like all these people can be named. Right. Don't get me started on Jeffrey. <laughs> um, um <Thanks>. but <laughs> one you know, one more thing now that you bring this up, right? So, you know, um I've I've bumped I've bumped into a few friends of mine that um that struggle with telling their parents that they've had the creepy uncle, that they've had the bad experience, mm. right? Yeah. So, you know, yeah. As okay, so um, as a as a parent, right? Um, how do you if you suspect this, right? Mm-hmm. How do you how do you bring this subject up, right? And and as a and as you know, as someone that has gone through that, you know, how do you bring it up to your parents? Because I also think there's a lot of shame yeah. you know, that comes along with it that, that shouldn't yeah. be there, but that that somewhere somehow, you know, people feel it. Right. Yeah. You know, so how would you dabble that with, you know, as a parent or as a kid? Yeah. Well, the tough thing about this in particular, when it's in a family is that kids, sometimes when they bring it up, they might even get resistance from their parents who don't want to believe it or don't believe it. Right. I mean, heaven forbid that that's the, the, that's the situation, but um, hopefully there is someone in the family that they can feel safe telling this to and getting help. Because that's not that's that's not what anybody should be subjecting a child to. That's I mean, and going to whatever authorities that need to um, 
be brought in for the situation uh, because you never know if they're if they did it before they may still be doing it if they had access to to kids and so that needs to stop as soon as possible just like it you know they had to stop or thankfully stopped it with everything that was going on with the um, that doctor with the gymnastics team I mean look at the access that that person had too it was yeah. just like a constant stream of potential and, victims and, and you know and you know what it is I think I think it's also like a lot of people who are are doing this are people that they, they trust right and yeah, I mean they put themselves in positions where they can be trusted exactly and I think yeah. you know, I think it's very difficult to kind of manage yeah when you're yeah for sure this. um but let's go back to your book right um okay and um we should, uh, you, 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 you already gave me one gem, right? Um, and then it took us to the entire conversation. So this will, <laughs> you know, before, you know, before we go into your other gem that you're going to give me, um, okay. you know, do you, and then Anisha, you shared some of your personal experiences, in, in, you know, with your kids in this book, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Like I took my daughter with me when I got an STI test, a blood test. Oh. I wrote about that in the book. Okay. So let's, let's talk about that. Right. Okay, so, <laughs> so, you know, you know, I, I didn't grow up on a, you know, you need to get checked like weekly or I'm um, thinking weekly. You need to get, you don't, you know, you don't regularly, get, <laughs> regular, get regular, yearly, whatever you want to call it. Right. However uh, often you need. So, you know, I was always under the, you know, as long as I'm, as long as I'm good, I'm good. Right. Um, and, um, you know, there was, uh, there was a point, I think this was like five years ago, six years ago. Um, I had just started a new, a new job. Um, I was a program coordinator uh, for a uh, for a nonprofit that would go into schools and change the behavior aspect of kids through play, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. uh, and um, I was sweating a lot, but I was a runner before, you know what I mean? So it was kind of like, whatever. Um, but I was getting a lot of buildup and I started shitting bricks. And I didn't, I didn't know how to, how to like even had, like I didn't even know where to go. Like, you know I mean, so I, you know, now I'm on, now I'm on a computer, right? Luckily, you know, I was like, I think it was 22, 23, you know what I mean? But look at the age at where I'm getting tested. And I had started when I was in high school. You yeah. See? So, yeah. you know, how do you bring that culture into your kids where it's kind of like, listen, this is something that we should be doing. Like if we go to like the dentist yeah. or something that, you know, we just do the regular physicals at the doctor. Yeah. How do you kind of like make that like a, like, I guess like a common thing? Yeah. So it is a bit of a radical notion that I have, but I think that, um, and I want to be clear that this is not a sexual act, but I think it's okay to give the older teens permission, maybe even uh, a guide that they can follow. But I think it's important for, for these older teens to do a genital self-exam. And the reason for that, or the justification I have for that, is when I taught college level human sexuality, there was one, um, this a was couple semesters. San Francisco, right? Yeah, CCSF, City College of San Francisco. Um, one of the classes that I had was primarily students who were part of the working adult degree program. And this was a few semesters that I, that I taught that program. It was a fantastic group, um, but they were all older adults. And one of my small assignments that I gave, I gave them a choice of you know, three different things they could choose from. And one of those assignments was to do a genital self-exam. It was probably the easiest of the things <laughs> that they could have chose, yeah. but it was the one that gave people the most resistance. Like nobody really wants to do a genital self-exam. So um, there was, one woman in my class and she was in her late fifties. And when we turned in all the assignments, she was like, you know, professor, I hated that assignment. <laughs> I hated that assignment. She said, but you know, I, I took the time. I, you know, I waited the last minute, <laughs> put it off as long as I could. Honest. And I, yeah. And she said, I went into my bedroom. I locked the door. I went into my bathroom. I locked the door. I pulled out the mirror and I pulled out the, the textbook and I followed the instructions. And she said, I, what I got out of that assignment was such a strong sense of ownership of my body and feeling very proud of my body and that I, and a new sense of wanting to protect this really vulnerable part of me 
And she said, I am, I was amazed at how long, you know, mid fifties or late fifties, right? How many years of my life I re, re, relied on someone else to tell me how it looked. Wow. That, yeah. Right. So if you go to the doctor, maybe once a year, I mean, women go to an OBGYN once a year, usually for checkups. Um, if you're relying on your doctor to tell you what looks different when they've seen hundreds, if not thousands of vulvas between yours and this next, this, this next appointment, how can you ever rely that they're going to know what's changed, right? So when I would give this student, this to my, just the regular college students too, the ones who would do it would have a very similar reaction. Like, I want to, I want to protect this. Like, I want to make sure that now that I know what it looks like, it's not scary anymore. I can see if there, if any changes, like heaven forbid you get a lump and you don't get it checked out in three months from now, it's, you know, three or nine months now, it's three times the size, right? That's, that's frightening. But if you find something early, you can go get it checked out early and hopefully find out that it's nothing serious. Um, can you provide me with that assignment? I can. I want, yes. I want, <laughs> I, listen, I want this homework. I want this homework because I want to, I want to, I want to do that. Um, yeah, it's my freebie. Actually, I have it that I can give it to your audience. Perfect. And, and you know what? We'll do that. And then, you know, or we, maybe we just form a group and then we check out, you know, how's everybody doing today? How's everybody I would doing love that? to lead that group. That was an amazing group to lead. <laughs> um, all right. Um, now, you know, now, now, now you could give me the next gem for your book because I feel like we've just somewhere, somehow just gotten into another conversation. <laughs> <laughs> it's, um, it's an occupational hazard for me. <laughs> I'll go off on all kinds of like no, really but, fascinating but, tangents. <laughs> And, and you know i was just talking to my friends about this right um you know you know she was she was upset that you know that she, you know people weren't uh um trying to have the very serious conversations right mm -hmm. and i told her like you know as you know there's no point of you having a serious conversation with someone who isn't going to be receptive to it whether they agree with you or not right um and i think that's like the beauty of having conversations with people um that when you sit down with them and you're both willing to like kind of hear each other out and listen to what you're mm -hmm. saying you know, it, it allows the conversation to just kind of flow. Right. Um, so, you know, just, just, you know, once again, going off the topic, um, you know, but here is the time where you give me the another gem and we're not going to okay. stick on the book this time. We're sticking on. the book. <laughs> well, this one's also in the book. Um, one of the other, I gave you the analogy of, of math, right? Yes. And that it's something that, that builds and it's, it's something similar. Um, Think about how we teach kids around the stove, okay? So when kids are little and they're toddlers, we say, don't touch hot, right? Super simple. But as they get older, we start to teach them a little more. Like now they're eight or nine, they can see the, the buttons and the dials and they can see that when this little indicator light is lit, that's when the stove is hot, right? And then they get a little older and we teach them how to use the stove safely. So sexuality is the exact same thing. Like usually we're starting with, this right? This is a really good analogy. This is really, <laughs> I've never thought about that, but that's a really good analogy. Well, the same thing with sex. You have certain things that you want to be careful of. and <laughs> Kind of put it in simple terms, right? This right. no, this yes, you yeah, know? yeah. That, and, and, you know, you know, I think, you know, as, as you bring up these analogies, which are actually really great. And, I, you know, and the thing about analogies that I like is that it's kind of like our everyday lives. But then when you put them like in different terms, you're kind of like, wow, like that's fine. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, but, you know, I think, you know, the, the beauty of, um, of having these conversations um, and providing these, uh, these analogies is that um, it allows uh, everyone to comprehend. And yeah. I think you know, um, I definitely know, like, listen to me, I told you I'm, I'm a baseball coach. So I definitely have a bunch of like high school students who are going to be watching this somewhere down the line. I know this, even though I tell them they're not supposed to, but you know, <laughs> I know they are, um, you know, but I also think like it's important, you know, kind of to expose kids um, to, to have these conversations and whatnot. Um, 
Mama Sutra, because I, th- I think that's what I'm gonna call you from now on. You know, um, you know, doctor. You know, you're a doctor. I'm not trying to take nothing away from you, right? Um, no. no. <laughs> right? Um, and another question, right? So, you know, I I noticed that in the book, you put in really big letters. You put "Read me," right? Um, was 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 there like a, a kind of like a little hint in behind the? <laughs> right? And also, well, okay. Before 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 you go on, right? And also the yep. conversations between the talk, right? Uh, yeah. So I think um, you know. And just me, like, when I saw the book, right, I'm like, this is a book that I would, like, if I'm, like, on a plane, like, oh, okay, I'm reading this one. Like, I'm definitely taking it, right? <laughs> um, so, you know, <laughs> how many, you know, how many how many more books have you written? Is this, um, is this like, part of, like, a, a trilogy type of thing? Um, this was my first. This is my book, baby. Your first. <laughs> my first book. Yeah. Um, so, you asked about Read Me. Okay. So, the first cover was this one. Okay read me okay so you remember alice in wonderland the uh-huh. little rabbit yep. drink me the little bottle drink me and they shrunk down yeah, yeah. this was read me and i mean i had the hardest time coming up with a name for the book because the first iterations had like 20 words in the title it was just ridiculous right because it's a tough it's a tough thing initially i wanted to call it raising sex smart kids but Long. if you have the word sex yeah it's boring but if you have the word sex in the title, you can't advertise it anywhere. <laughs> so this was the first cover. Um, and the, the piece that I thought was the most, imp- or, I mean, it's also very important was the subhead and this, a personal primer for the talk. It was just teeny tiny lettering for the other ones. So this is, this is much more, much bigger. It jumps out. No, and, and, you, and you know what it is like, I think just from the cover, you already get a like if even even if you're just walking by and a glance at it, you're already kind of like okay, I know where this book is going, right? Because <laughs> you know somewhere down the line we've always had the talk, right? So um, I think this is great. Now, question: um, Where can we where can we find the book? Um, and um, where can we find you? And um, is there anything that you like do on like on a regular basis that you know that we could reach out and kind of be part of? Yeah, thank you for asking. So my website is themamasutra.net, although keep watching that space because it's going to shift to themamasutra.com soon. Um, you can find me anywhere on the internet as the Mama Sutra, T-H-E-M-A-M-A-S-U-T-R-A. Um, the book, you can find it in any bookstore. You can find it on Amazon. You might have to ask for it in your local bookstore, but they can absolutely get it. Um, yeah, it's available everywhere. It's actually available on Amazon worldwide. So if you speak English and you're hearing this in another country, you can order it. Um, my website, um, I've just now partnered with a print on demand company so that you can order the book also from anywhere in the world and anywhere there's like a, I think it's a FedEx, um, location, they can print it and get it to you at pretty decent cost. So that's, that's when you buy it from the book sales page on my website. And I can give you the, the link for that. Um, as far as upcoming, upcoming stuff, I have a bunch of stuff coming out. And that was what we were talking about before we went live. <laughs> yes, yes. You know, there's, this is like coronavirus time has been a really interesting time. And it's, it's felt like a, like I'm in a chrysalis, that cocoon mode. And just like so much is building and growing and changing. And, and I have classes coming out. Um, I was going to do a webinar on menstruation soon. Um, I answer questions on Quora and I recently hit a million views for my questions. And one of them was one of the top questions, like I did not expect the response to this. Um, one was about menstruation and that's one of the hottest ones. The other one is, um, what's an unpopular opinion you have about sex and, uh, or about relationships. And I, of course, made mine about sex because it's all I talk about. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that actually is, that's the very top question that people uh, read. That's the most read. Now, okay, so, so, you, know, you, you mentioned this question, right? And I want to ask this because, um, you know, I think um, I want to, I want to have a daughter, right? Um, that's kind of like one of my things. I want to have a, I want to have a little girl. Right. But I also think that the menstruation conversation, right. (laughs) To me, right. Like, and you know, I don't know who, I don't know who my partner is going to be. And I don't know, 
how ready she is or how much does she know about it itself, right? You know. Yeah, even women who have, or people who have a period don't always know everything. Exactly, and that, you know, that's what I'm saying, right? You know, how, do you, how would you manage that conversation with a kid? Yeah. So the first time I had to have the conversation was when my kids were toddlers. I mean, oh. when they're really little, like, I don't, oh, gosh, old enough to walk because they walked in on the bathroom, into the bathroom with me oh <laughs> on the toilet. God. Um, and I had, I mean, this is going to be graphic. So that's okay. that's your ears if, you, <laughs> if you're listening, <laughs> you don't want to hear this. Um, I mean, I had a, a pad that I was changing and there's blood on the pad. And my daughter was like, oh, are you okay? And I was like, yeah, this is just something that happens. You know? <laughs> and I just briefly described it as um, every month my body makes a little nest potentially for an egg. And then when I don't, if it doesn't get fertilized, the nest comes out. Now, like that's, I mean, it's really simple. That's how I described it to her at that age. But, um, and then gave her more information as she got older. Wow. Wow. Yeah. You, know, you, you know what? What I'm going to do is you know, I'm just going to hit you up, you know, and, <laughs> and your analogies and your way you're describing things are just like kind of like perfectly like subscribe. Like here it is. This is what, this is what you need to say. Yeah. Um, it's, uh, I mean, honestly, it's, it is really easy. We just make it, we just make it tough for some reason by making it scarier. I don't know. Is scarier the word? It's just like, we, I think, I think it, I think it is scary. Cause you know what it is? It's like, I think we all know that, you know, we're all doing it, right? We're all yeah. part of it. Um, yeah. But for some reason, the the talk about it just becomes like, uh-oh, like, yeah. oh, we're talking about this now? You know, and, you know, I think, you know, I, I also like, you know, the, the the mission behind, like, my podcast is also that, you know, I'm bringing up subjects that we should be talking about and kind of almost like normalizing the conversation um, more, more than just kind of make, just keeping the taboo of the taboo-ness of it. You know, it's kind of like, we should be talking about this because we do this every day. We engage with people who are doing this and what's the proper way and how do we engage? And if we have an issue where well, we don't agree with something, you know, how can we have a conversation about it to either agree to disagree or at least yeah. understand each other's points, you know? Um, so I think it's just that we're just trying to make it scarier than it already is because we're all partaking on it, right? Um, yeah. And if you aren't, you know, at it's least- happening. You know, <laughs> yeah, and if you're, if you're not partaking in it, it's happening. So, you know, like, you know, I think, I think it's, I don't know, I just think these are conversations that are, you know, very important for people to, like, be part of, um, and especially parents, right, because I think, like you said, right, um, we kind of just do what our parents kind of did to us, but we never really questioned, you know, was that the proper way of parenting, right, and like, I, and like I told you before, you know, I, I'm a strong believer that, you know, you can have all the kids you want, that doesn't mean you're a parent to me like that to me is you you, have, you got kids but doesn't mean you're a parent right um, <laughs> you I, got kids <laughs> you got kids but you ain't a parent like yeah i mean because the thing is like i feel like there needs to be a level of education of what um the upbringing of a child is there needs to be a level of education on like how a parent should uh, conduct themselves when con you know when dealing with the yeah. kid and if you don't have that knowledge you know like you're just you're just you're just kind of going off of what happened to you mm -hmm. and not being quite sure if that was the message that was trying to be transmitted yeah. to you. Yeah. And I'm like, I told you, I could go off on this because I had this conversation with my mom, like, like, Oh, you know what? But I meant to say this. I'm like, yeah, but that wasn't the message that I received. And, 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 and in, my, in the back of my head, I'm like, yeah, it goes back to my point that, you know, not, not all these parents are parents. She's probably going to kill me when she sees this, but it's all right. <laughs> <laughs> She'll be okay. She'll be okay. Sorry, mom. Uh, sorry. <laughs> um, Mama Sutra. Um, thank you very much for being here with me. Um, is there anything else um, that you would like to share? Um, is there, I don't know, I, I feel like, listen to me. I, you know what? We're, we're going to do this again, right? And we'll, Excellent. We'll, we'll, we'll just, we'll just kind of like, you know, do a little <laughs> switch to it, right? Because I also saw that you have other, other subject that we could talk about that I was interested in, but I feel like this one was much, much more important right now because yeah. I'm getting a lot of like, you know, a lot of, you know, I'm, I'm just, I just turned 30. So a lot of my friends are kind of like. Happy birthday. Uh, <laughs> well, well, it was in March, but, uh, you know, it's recent. I'm still struck. Okay. I'm still struggling saying the fact that I'm 30, which is kind of like weird to me. Well, um, the fact that you had to celebrate it during Corona, you could, you could probably say you're just still celebrating. I'm still celebrating. Um, you know, but, you know, there's definitely a lot more subjects that we could tackle on this. Yeah. Um, I'd definitely be willing to, you know, hop back on on a call and uh, make this happen. I would love that. All right. I, I love geeking out about all <laughs> sex related stuff. Oh, no, listen to me. I'm, <laughs> I'm the same. Like, to, and you know, it's funny. Like, um, I, was, I was talking to, um, to, a, uh, to a sex coach and I was like, 
the first question was like, all right, cool. How do I become a sex coach and what I got to do? Because like, you know, I, sometimes just having the kind of like the little title certification kind of just adds a lot to like validity to what you're saying, right? So um, I don't know. And I mean, to be a sexologist, I can only imagine like the process of going through that. So <laughs> I, I, I can feel it in the breathing. I can feel it in the <laughs> All right. A um, lot of years. <laughs> well, um, thank you for tuning in. Um, I look to Negro's party. Um, this is Mama Sucha. Make sure to follow her on Instagram, follow her on all platforms, Twitter and everything. Um, you can catch me on my Instagram, Anagos Party. I'm going to be posting um, the book that she has. Um, I am going to be posting clips of this. So make sure to comment, share, subscribe, do everything you got to do. Make sure to get the word out of what we're doing here. Um, Mama Sucha, thank you very much once again. And it was a pleasure. Thank you so much for inviting me. I had fun. <laughs>